grace and peace be with you. And also with you. Behold, God is doing a new thing here, now, in the midst of our routines. The Holy One who created heaven and earth forms us afresh today. Let our spirits rise to respond to God's call. Let us pray. We come to this place, gracious God, because somewhere in our lives, faintly or distinctly, we have heard your call to us. We come, some sleepily, some alert, some tired, some energized, to share in your presence. We come to say thanks be to God that we are your people. We come to worship, to know better what your call upon us means. So be it, and so it is. Amen. Our hymn this morning is Blessed Assurance. Please stand and join with the choir and myself in leading this beautiful hymn, number 369, all stanzas. In the Gospels, Jesus says these powerful words. Just let them land in your heart. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. And so every single week, we celebrate you. Those tuning in by, by our digital live stream or through our broadcast televised delay a week. And through those of you who are in person today. You bring alive the presence, the Spirit of God in our midst. And so we invite you to fill out what we call our hay card. It should be in your pews. You can connect with our paper hay card or our digital hay card. And I know some of you that are new to our church are reluctant to do this because it takes so much courage 
to kind of share your identity in a word thing. But I would invite you to fill that out and give us your contact info. If you don't want to give me your contact info, at least write your name, and then I can pray for you during the week. And the hey card is for everyone, and we want you all to fill it out. You may have a special prayer concern or message that you want to share. Drop it in the offering plate or connect with us through the QR code, and we thank you for doing so. Every single week, we also, as an act of worship, take up an offering because giving back to God is a way of saying thank you and worshiping. And we thank you for all the many gifts that you share with this church. Let's pray. Oh God, accept these gifts that we share this day, and may we use them faithfully to bring honor and glory to your name and kingdom. In Christ's name. Amen.
invite us to remain standing as we affirm our faith in the risen Christ by reading and or reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Please pray with me. Lord God, we bow our knee to you in prayer this day to thank you for your promises and your presence in our lives and in the life of our church and to acknowledge your majesty and your love for us and all of creation. We have felt your comfort, seen your gifts, experienced your guidance, and been touched by your grace and mercy. Help us always to be conscious of your mighty acts, and especially of your love. We ask that you fill this room with your presence so everyone can experience that perfect peace in you, if only for this holy moment. We ask your guidance for the leaders of our denomination as we wrestle with the issues that divide and alienate us from each other. Help us to remember Jesus' command to love our neighbor as ourself and help us to follow that command. Please wrap your arms around the people who are suffering in Libya and in Morocco in the wake of those national disaster, natural disasters and ease their suffering. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, church. Song, if you're able, please stand. We're going to sing this version of an old spiritual. It's called Give Me Jesus. Oh 
Today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times him, he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demons into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now, there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear." So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Pam Gunkel, for <clears throat> reading our gospel story today. And thank you, choir, musicians, productions team. Thank you, um, George Lamons, for your tender prayer. Thank you, Cleo McQueen, who is taking some time off, rightly deserved. I don't know if you've noticed, but God is on the move in and through our community. So this sermon series for the month of September, like I said last week, it's not really about, what, props. This sermon series is really about our church's mission, vision, and core values. The mission of our church here at First United Methodist Church of Gulfport is what? What do we do? We make disciples of Jesus Christ. And by disciple, I'm talking to, the, to a discipleship is about how we grow in Christ, how we become more and more like Christ. But this series is also about our optimal goal, our vision, and that is to love God and neighbor. 
And I believe this is the greatest commandment because that's what Jesus says. All other commandments hinge on this. And when Jesus says neighbor, I believe he means who? Everybody. That's right. And so we believe our optimal goal at this church is everyone who's a member or affiliated or connected.